Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kat Vlies from Central New Mexico Community College. Let's take a look at the parathyroid glands in this video J of the endocrine system. What we're seeing here on this image, of course, is the thyroid gland with its two lobes. And these green circles are supposed to represent the parathyroid glands, which sit on the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland. Now, it isn't unusual for there to be additional parathyroid glands distributed throughout the chest area. Now, because these parathyroid glands are typically associated with the thyroid gland, you can imagine that when part of a thyroid gland needs to be removed, or the whole thyroid gland, possibly due to thyroid cancer, that the parathyroid glands, therefore, are mostly removed as well, if not completely, and that has its consequences when it comes to parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone works opposite calcitonin. Remember, calcitonin is secreted by the thyroid gland. And that means that parathyroid hormone is going to stimulate osteoclasts. Remember, these are the cells that break down bone tissue. So this hormone doesn't just impact our bone tissue with the help of stimulating osteoclasts, but also our kidneys and our small intestine. So let's take a look at this with the help of a diagram. This flowchart addresses both parathyroid hormone on this side of our diagram or flowchart, as well as calcitonin. Let's first focus on the effects of parathyroid hormone. So parathyroid hormone is going to be released when calcium levels in our blood begin to drop below homeostatic levels. Inside of our parathyroid glands, remember they're located on the posterior side of the thyroid, so we're looking here at a posterior image. Notice the trachealis muscle uh, in the trachea. Um, inside of the parathyroid gland are cells, they're called chief cells, that secrete parathyroid hormone. This hormone affects three different areas of the body, the bone tissue, the kidneys, and the small intestine. In the bone tissue, PTH will leave the bloodstream and inhibit the osteoblasts, but it's going to stimulate the osteoclasts. Remember, there are those multinucleated cells that are very macrophage-like. And of course, when the osteoclasts are stimulated, they're going to allow for the disassembly of the bone tissue, and that leads to the release of calcium, which can then enter into the bloodstream, returning the calcium levels in the blood back to homeostatic levels. Now, in addition to affecting bone tissue, we also need to take a look at the effect of PTH on the kidneys. PTH leaves the bloodstream, finds receptors on particularly the distal convoluted tubules, and then stimulates the reabsorption of calcium from the filtrate. Here we are in the lumen of our tubule. And the calcium is then returned to the blood. And that, of course, returns the calcium levels in the blood back to homeostatic levels. Another important function of the kidneys is to secrete the finalized form of vitamin D, which we call calcitriol. Remember that the skin really starts the process of vitamin D synthesis with the help of the sun. Then the liver modifies the, the molecule that is beginning to be vitamin D, and it's not until uh, that molecule makes it to the kidneys that it becomes an active form of vitamin D, more specifically vitamin D3 or calcitriol. So that is secreted into our bloodstream by the kidneys, making our kidneys yet again an endocrine organ. Now, the importance of vitamin D, or the active form of vitamin D, we see happening in our small intestine. In the small intestine, if we are looking here at the um, columnar, columnar cells of our small intestine, here we see a capillary, we even see a lacteal, then notice that the Vitamin D, basically a hormone from our kidneys, is going to bind to the columnar cells of the, of the small intestine, and that allows for the calcium that is part 
of our food that we have been, been digesting in our small intestine, that calcium can then be absorbed and make it into the bloodstream, again, returning calcium levels in the bloodstream to homeostatic levels. So notice that the small intestine and the kidneys are interdependent of one another when it comes to vitamin D in particular. If our blood calcium levels begin to rise, then of course we're not going to see PTH being released, but instead our thyroid gland releases calcitonin, calcitonin which is going to st stimulate our parafollicular cells. Remember, those are the, the cells that sit in between the follicles to release calcitonin. Calcitonin is going to actually inhibit the osteoclast, so work opposite PTH and trigger the osteoblasts to start using the calcium to make new bone tissue. So this wraps up our discussion of parathyroid hormones secreted by the parathyroid glands, as well as calcitonin secreted by the thyroid glands, which is one of the hormones of the thyroid glands. Of course, they also secrete thyroid hormone. I'd like to add one more quick thing before we leave this flow chart, and that is what happens at the level of the kidneys here. We mentioned that the calcium is going to be reabsorbed from the filtrate in response to the binding of PTH. Typically, as calcium is being reabsorbed, we're going to see that phosphate ions are going to be secreted into the filtrate. So there tends to be the, this opposite exchange um, Calcium is exchanged for phosphate. I just needed to add that so that you're aware of that, particularly when you go into pathophysiology and you need to learn about all of these electrolyte um, imbalances or balances.